So when it says start, you start. I'd like to start this by saying the meeting is called to order. And the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, we would also like to call this meeting to order. At this time, Glenn, would you like to take over, please? Absolutely. Thank you all for coming out <laughs> to this special joint meeting. And it's obviously, it's a historic meeting, and these two boards have never met together at the same time. But it, the city felt it was important that you both hear it at the same time this information that we have to present to you because. The city values your your advice and your counsel, and that's what this is all about this evening, is to hear what we have heard, and as soon as we could get all the people in the room together, we wanted you to hear it too, as it was. For purposes of um, those who might be watching our history or those that might have come in late to the exercise, I'm going to speak just a little bit about how it came to be that we are here talking about the Beirut Memorial Grove. Many will remember that it was the efforts of, of, a, of a class that wanted to plant one tree for every person who died in the Beirut, Memorial, the Beirut bomb blast of October 23rd, 1983. And from that effort came the memorial that we have our observances at every year, and so too has come a place in history for the city of Jacksonville that memorializes just how ingrained military and civilian are together in this community. Those trees were planted, and they were planted in the median of um, Highway 24, Lejeune Boulevard, and they, uh, they, they stood sentinel for a long time, and they were beautiful, and they were a remarkable thing, even when they were not had leaves on them and not there, but they were a true beacon of what spring was when it arrives here in eastern North Carolina. But the Badford pear tree was not something that weathered weather well, and consequently, between that and some errant motor, uh, b um, automobile accidents and other things, um, they kind of suffered as it was. And so there was a lot of damage that was done to the Bradford Pair. And also with um, the construction that occurred, there came to be a need to say, where are we going to move some of these trees in a place of honor? Where is something that's going to happen that we can do something with that at that time? And so obviously with consultation of what was the uh, former Be uh, Beautification and Appearance Advisory Committee and the Beirut Memorial Advisory Board, a location was initially selected that was near the intersection of Lejeune Boulevard and Highway 24 bypass, as it was, and we all liked that idea. We thought that was a grand idea, and particularly that the, the Lejeune Greenway and Trail was going to go through it, and the vision of being able to walk amongst a, a tree that would flower about the same time that the ceremony was going on just all seemed wonderful and alluring. But alas, um, there were problems with that site. The site is a dedicated wetlands um, site, and it was used as such as part of the construction of what we now know as the bypass area, and so it was not available at that site. And so the new site was selected, and we like that site too. Patrick Carroll has reminded us that the, um, himself, a former um, Beirut um, a person who served in Beirut, that the Geiger Tigers came from Camp Geiger, and so being across from the um, Camp Geiger, that seemed even that it, the fate smiled a little bit in our direction about um, selecting something that would go in that area. And so the idea to put the 273 trees in that area was, um, was advanced and work was begun to get um, that, that um, made something that would be permanent. And this is what the view that we all love to see, that what it would look like if he was driving on um, from US 17 toward the Memorial Grove, that wonderful um, bloom that would be out there at the time of the observances. And so construction began. The state, um, you must admit, uh, embraced this idea wholly. Um, they aggregated funds in such a way that it made this to, uh, possible to do. Um, the irrigation was put in to help um, in the effort of preserving 
the trees after they were planted. And of course, all of us know there were certain weather conditions that occurred during the time of the planting that um, caused us to be a bit cold as it was, but it all advanced. And so construction from the taking the holes and digging them and to actually planting the trees took a matter of about four months um, to undertake. And um, that was, we were happy to see that progress and couldn't wait until spring when we saw some of the trees bloom and uh, they looked like they were gonna be um, a nice thing there. But um, alas, as, um, as, as summer progressed and came upon us there, um, some of them did not bloom and some of them did not have leaves and we knew at that time that there was a significant problem as it was. Um, the roses did bloom. Um, the trees and the other site was a, were evaluated and um, conversations were held and things moved on to, from that point. Now Michael LaCorey, um, was his unit was going to take care of those trees. He was going to help um, after the state got through with the project the city was going to take it over and maintain it. And Michael's now going to talk to us a little bit about what the city did um, in that regard. And we came now with the help, and um, forgive me for not doing so, Anthony Prince is here with us also, our Transportation Services um, um, Administrator. And he worked with them and having now the state saying, basically, city, you can take over this project as it was. So Michael, why don't you take us from that point? Well, and, and Glenn's absolutely right. What we saw during the summer and early spring was that the trees weren't responding the way we had hoped mm -hmm. to respond. Uh, we talked with DOT about that. Uh, as some of you are aware, a study was done uh, and a report was brought back to us that gave many reasons why some things weren't done. We, in turn, after that, decided that we would take some soil samples. So our horticulturalists and our assistant park superintendent and some other members of the city went out and took 82 soil samples and what we found was was a little bit the same of what the state found in in uh in relation to the soil the ph out there was around 8.2 highs is of being 8.8 .8, which is not a good level for the autumn cherry to survive long term uh, just so we know the autumn cherry we would like that the ideal soil conditions for that would be about 6.5 that's a big stretch right there. So we sat down and we said, hey, we need to do something about this. We're, we're currently working with the state on how to best move forward. And we started doing some research on our own. What's the best way for us to move forward as a city, as a division? And we reached out to some experts. And one of the experts we were able to reach out to is Mike Worthington, who is here tonight to do a little, little presentation for us. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Worthington uh, about a month ago at a Green and Grow show in Greensboro, North Carolina, and was very pleased that he knew about the project and was very aware of the project. Mr. Worthington is in Greenville, North Carolina. He's been a tree grower for 25 years, and he is also a graduate of NC State University, and I'm going to hand it over to him to take us a little bit through a slideshow. Okay. So. You know all this. You know the reason I'm here is because um, obviously I was aware of the project, and when I was asked about the possibility of replacement of these trees, I was concerned because um, a fellow board member on the Urban Forest Council was one of the people who was asked to come out and gather information on the site and do some testing to help evaluate why they had the, the trees had failed. So um, uh, I was concerned that if the project wasn't successful and I supplied the trees that if something didn't go well you, you might would think it was my fault <laughs> so um, you know and and you know as it as it turns out I, you know I probably won't be supplying any trees to this project so I just came up here because I know this is a big deal this is a high-profile thing everybody wants these plants to be successful and you know they properly honor the, the people they represent so um, anyway, that's, that's a little bit about how um, I got involved. Um, the soils are, I think, probably the last time this group was informed about the site was the thing that wasn't well known. The soils are very poor. They're probably uh, spoils that were brought in and used, you know, as what we would call field. And um, they are, are very poor soils. Um, and I think that the plants that are there 
had a lot of things that um, a perfect storm of problems um, kept them from being successful. You had a lot of rain, you had a lot of other things that would have damaged the project to some degree, but they still don't solve this problem of not having a great soil. Um, so <clears throat> what do we do to increase survival of, let's just say, the cherries, the trees that were originally used? They really, the soil will need to be really excavated and a tremendous uh, remediation of the soils would have to be done and would be, be very expensive. So the plants, cherries, in general, we are at the border of their climatic zone range and they need, a, uh, they're not very forgiving, they need more of an ideal uh, soil and conditions to do really well. And then additionally, I'm concerned that if now we're having to go back and, and uh, to to a, a starting point and, and reevaluate this whole thing, that the fall flowering on this tree, you know, there's very few options for fall flowering, and you, and and if you had to try to find something that would flower in the fall, this I can understand why this tree was chosen, but the fall the the fall flowering is very sporadic, so it is. It is uh, depending on unusually warm fall, um, you know, s s conditions that vary from year to year, and it could be that the whole month surrounding October 23rd that they don't flower at all. Some that you know the uh, the odds are that that they won't more often than they do, and they'll never be full blown glory in a single time. It's it's very uh, it's kind of a fluke. That they that they flower and it, but it's very conditional based on the, the weather. So as I said, you know, I was talking about how unforgiving they are. You know, I just tried to pull something, uh, you know, from another source other than myself. And so this is a Missouri Botanical Garden, a very respected institution. And you know, this is like all cherries. You know, um, they're susceptible to a large number of disease, insect and disease problems. Leaf spot, dieback. You know, I, I won't read it all, but. Um, Another option may be to consider something that is a lot tougher, you know, more tolerant of the conditions as they exist. So, um, you know, I'm recommending that you might consider another feature of the plant, such as fall color, and another plant uh, that will have the visual appeal that you want and will be at least reliable and will be tough enough that I feel confident it would do well on the site. So um, this is w really the main tree that I'm recommending because it can tolerate the high pH. So um, you, know, you still probably would want to amend it. It's not ideal for it to be 8.8 .8 for anything, but this tree would tolerate it. In Dallas, they have very um, alkaline soils in Dallas, Texas. This is the main tree in Dallas, Texas, uh, along with you know, live oaks and you know, uh, crepe myrtles, of course. But, uh, it uh, is more statuesque, um, has fantastic fall color. Um, it will look really nice and, and uh, healthy and green, and I feel like uh, this tree is, is a hard-to-kill kind of tree that is very attractive. <coughs> so there's the leaves. And this is just a recommendation. Uh, again, I understand and respect <coughs> the reasons that the tree was chosen originally. Um, I just feel knowing the soil type that it's going to be a very uh, involved process of soil excavation to to have success. So you know, I just pulled some different different things and different sources. This is from the manual of uh, Woody Landscape Plants. Michael Durr is probably you know the most nationally known expert. And this is you know um, a, a guide and that people uh, in our business use nationwide and. You know, some of his comments are, you know, impressed by its freedom from insects and diseases. It's almost in insect and pest free and disease free. And there aren't many trees on the planet that are like that. Very, very tough tree. So, you know, I won't bore you with all reading all these details, but it, it is just universally um, praised for its toughness and heat tolerance, drought tolerance doesn't like to be wet, 
um, but can take extreme drought, which we're more likely to have year in, year out problems. On that site, we had, I know, a very wet year. We had, you know, turf they were trying to keep alive, so the irrigation was running before the, you know, the city had taken it over at that point. Um, so it was kind of a perfect storm of uh, problems, but as I understand it, that you know we won't have this irrigation you know concern the, the way you know the property is you know it will be handled in the future. So it's it's not a dissimilar in size plant from the plant that you had. It'll have a much fuller crown, um, uh, uh, better density, more uh, leaves on the same size plant. Um, won't have any flowers. There won't, there won't be any uh, significant flowers, but the fall color is, is quite spectacular. So this is in New Bern. So where I'm from, I'm from Greenville, and um, so I've taken pictures, and I always, you know, of course all the pictures that I save are at the peak of fall <laughs> color. So here's one in New Bern, and this was November 9th. So, I mean, I wish I had, you know, if I had known, I would have gone to an effort to take pictures on October 23rd, but yeah, there will be uh, there will be fall color on, on October 23rd in that range, but it will not be at the peak, and it will increase from that point on. So and here's in a parking lot in Greenville uh, on the 19th. So it, it's quite long long lasting fall color, but it won't be at the, it wouldn't be at the peak on the 23rd, but I'm quite sure you'd see a lot of color starting to form, and it would and it would increase over time. So. So anyway, that's you know that's my recommendation um, based on the conditions that that you have on the property, and I'd I'd love to see flowers. That would be great. It's really hard to have flowers of any significance uh, in reliability on October 23rd, and also you know I feel like the uh, survivability of the autumn Alice cherry would be questionable under those conditions. So where does that leave us now? Uh, moving forward, how do we as a city continue to work towards getting the grove uh, looking the way it should look? Uh, I know Glenn mentioned Anthony, Anthony Prince is here. Uh, he has been working diligent, diligently with the Department of Transportation to, to get a memo of understanding to turn that piece of property over to us with some funding. We'll work through those things in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, get those solved. As a staff, as a, as a city, we're going to try and uh, handle this, this uh, piece of property internally. We feel as though we can do it. We can plant these trees and, and, and hopefully have them uh, uh, survive at a great rate. Uh, we feel certain that we will have some trees out there by this October 23rd. Um, whether or not it's 273 or 73, I can't answer that yet until we get through the process of making sure the trees are available. We feel like they will be, but we have to, you know, obviously take those steps first. Um, but I can assure you that whether it's 73 or 273, <coughs> whatever is out there will be of quality and, and it will look good. and. And that is of the utmost important to, to us as a city right now. So that's how we intend to move forward as a parks division, and I think as a city as a whole. Well, with that, um, John Wood, city manager, is here. And uh, when, is there anything you'd like to add or summarize with us here or thoughts that you might have? I think several things. Number one, we are all disappointed that the tree that we thought was going to be the ideal tree is not going to, to work. We can spend a lot of time talking about why it didn't work, but at the end of the day, we need to come up with a course of action of how we move forward. The second thing is the DOT is very interested in having this project concluded. They are willing, and we're currently negotiating with them, to fund the necessary redevelopment. What they have told us, though, is they will not fund a complete redo of the site and major soil, that that just is too much money. Let's talk about that a moment. If you were to bring in the proper soil, you're going to lose the irrigation system that's there and the expenses just continue to climb. 
and even then you're going to have a, a, a tree which you've heard Mike talk about is most likely not going to be what we all thought it was going to be. What we're asking you all to do as joint committees who have given valuable input on this is to give us your thoughts and hopefully at the end of the meeting give us a consensus of moving forward. We are also willing to have you actually get in a transit bus. We we'll try to get you all in Glenn's car, but I don't think we can get 25 people in there. But we are very willing to take you on a field trip up to New Bern and to Greenville so you can actually see these trees that have actually grown 10, 15 years. So you can physically see them. Now this time of the year, you're not going to see beautiful color. But we are willing, very willing, to give you whatever additional information, field experience you would like. We do know that this tree is available in North Carolina, or at least in this general climate. Mike has checked on that. Whether we can get 300, which is the number we would like to buy, why is that? Whatever you plan out there, not all of it will survive under any conditions. There will always be a percent. So what we were going to do is buy an extra 10% of the trees and have those extra planted at an off-site so that as trees do die, we can use our own forces to bring them in. Another thing we'd like to mention is why are we doing this instead of a contractor? We are going to be responsible for the long-term maintenance of this. We feel much better knowing that we are the ones, our crews are going to be the ones who are going to be responsible for preparing every hole, making sure they're properly fertilized, making sure that any burlap or any type of container that they come in is taken off at the right time, and all those things. If we're eventually going to be responsible for their long-term stability, we want to be the ones who are planting them. And I think you can appreciate that. So here we are. We're to the point now where we need to come to some decisions. Our goal is still to have as many of these trees as possible planted so that in October of this year, we can have a ceremony. As Michael said, will it be all of the trees? Possibly. But at least it will be a significant number. So our discussion with you tonight is how do you feel about what we're saying? Are there other things you'd like for us to research? So with that, Glenn, I'll turn it back to you. I want to just add that um, one thing was that you folks heard um, um, Dr. Woodruff and others in the city council said they wanted to do this right. And so consequently, each of you are told that this fall we weren't going to have any trees there because it was going to take some time to get the cherries and do some things like that. And this continues in that tradition, and that's why you're sitting here tonight too because they want to make sure it's done right because it respects what it is that it represents at that time. So Mr. Chairman and Mr. Vice Chairman there, um, we can call on members to, um, to do that and uh, why don't we just let him call on folks so we can speak at one time or whatever there. I'd like to ask the question or two if I could. Is there, what size are the trees going to be when they're purchased? If, if they're going to grow three to four feet per year mm -hmm. uh, and they get 30, 40 feet high, then uh, we're looking at 10 year for a full grown tree. If we don't have saplings, you know. So do you think that would be fairly large trees? I think what's probably available <coughs> right now would be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, probably a two inch, eight to 10 foot tree. Well, that would be good. Yeah. In, that, in that range. Uh, we've, we've checked, we don't have, we don't have the quantities of these trees, even though we grow this tree and we love it, um, and we don't have have them in containers, which is my recommendation that they be planted in containers. Um, I think I think they should, you know, do well that way and be in the, the chance of getting a uniform crop. We think that they can be found all at a single nursery, so they all match up with each other very well. And three to four feet a year is kind of an ideal situation. In this situation, I don't think those trees are probably going to grow um, three feet a year once once they, they, they're they kind of settled in. And a couple of feet a year would, would be good. They're kind of short, stocky, stout trees by nature. Uh, 40 feet would be out, out in the open like that where there's no uh, competing shade or large trees nearby. You know, I, 
I could see them, you know, the 30 feet in 15 to 20 years. Let me also address that. That's one of the reasons why we're not saying that we are going to have all trees there by a set date. Sure. We are not <coughs> supportive of bringing in saplings. You know, what we want is something that from the very beginning has some magnitude. And what we have uh, talked to Mike about, and we certainly concur in, is something that's going to be a minimum of a one and a half inch and preferably a two inch caliper that would be eight to ten feet at planting. And again, they're not going to be planted in the ground, they're going to be planted in containers. Okay. Michael, do you want to add anything to no, that? No, I just think he's right. You know, that that's a 25 gallon plant basically. That's a good starting point yes. for, for, for this, and, and I think that's you'll get a good representation from the beginning with that size of a, a tree going in. Anyone else? Have a question? Have two, <coughs> yeah, uh, two questions. This tree will grow in that lousy soil we have out there. You know, yes, sir. And is the, the, the orange color, is that more accurate? It's kind of washed out on the screen, but yeah. the monitor is the, bright orange. The, 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 you know, of course, they are seedlings, which is good because then you have some diversity you know, but you also have diversity in fall color. You you get some will be more orange, some will be more red orange, some will be more red. Um, you may get some a little weaker, but generally they have outstanding co fall color. One of the um, articles that I quoted, I think it's in the slideshow, but I, I kind of skipped over it, was it's one of the few trees that rivals sugar maples. Is the the author of the Manual of Woody Landscape Plants. He's you know quite a plantsman and particularly a tree expert. And his comments were, you know, it, it rivals almost any tree for fall color and as far as a tree that we grow in more of a temperate climate as everybody who knows much about trees you don't see many sugar maples down here and they're none native they're all planted and they generally don't do very well so as far as fall color it's actually right at the top of the heap of what you can grow for fall color in eastern North Carolina. Because the Bradford tree was a very quick decision the bombing was on the 23rd of October we met the 24th of October we met the afternoon of the 23rd got a deal permission that week and then started looking for the trees so we'd seen a number of magazine articles mm -hmm. extolling the virtue of Bradford pear they didn't tell us about all the bad things about it <laughs> <laughs> Bra Bradford pear was probably uh, that was the heyday of Bradford pears and th there weren't Bradford pear is a variety as a cultivar and sometimes a cultivar it doesn't do the same thing when it grows in New England as it does here Bradford pears are almost unused here now but they're still popular in New England because they grow slower and they don't break and break up like they like they do here so uh, at that time I don't think necessarily with the information you had that you may have made a bad decision they just the tree had not existed in the world long enough to know what would happen after 25 years because the color was a benefit we our, our memorial tree program which we had established about three or four years prior to that we were planting maples oaks all those kind of things so the color wasn't even an issue so the color of the Bradford pair of flowers was it was sort of a, a very rapid benefit for us right so that's right. what we, that's what we had gone with that they're outstanding for that so uh, I don't think that was a that was necessarily at the time with what was known was a, was a poor decision and fortunately uh, over time yeah. it was come to be realized that you know that that these other problems could exist with them let me also mention about the Bradford pairs it is certainly not the city's intention nor the DOT's requirement that the existing Bradford pairs that, that are there, the original memorials, are going to be taken out. There will be some that will be taken out because of the finished work that will be needed for the Wilson Gate. There will be some that will be taken out as we work on drainage issues uh, on 24. There will be others that we will take out because, to be quite frank with you, it's almost an embarrassment for them to be there because they have split and they really just don't represent. But I want to assure you that the majority of the trees that are out there today are going to continue to be there, and they will only be taken out as, uh, I should say, NC State drivers decide they want to create new lane. <laughs> the trees are winning now. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? I'd like to ask a question. Yes. In your presentation, Mr. Worthington, I understood you to say that you were looking for a tree that bloomed around October the 23rd. No, no. These these trees will only be the fall color. So, I know that. oh, you mean I looked? That yes. you were looking for a tree that bloomed around October the 23rd right. in your search for this tree, right? 
it was my understanding that we chose the tree because we wanted a blooming tree in the spring and fall clutter in the winter. Okay. So this is what we had gone on all the time was a blooming tree in the spring. In the spring. Fall okay. color in the winter. Okay. So well, I, I may, maybe I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a little disturbed. Okay, well, maybe I misunderstood because I thought that you were really looking because autumn Alice, you know, is a yeah, it was autumn a fall. Yes, cherry. it was never a bloom in the spring. That's what its name was. It's a fall blooming cherry. Now, now yeah, it does I bloom in the we spring. The tree because it bloomed in the summertime, in the springtime, in no, the fall, come no, in the wintertime. No. No. It, but no. it, do, it does bloom in the spring. It's the cherry. It does bloom in the spring. Yeah. But the reason we selected it was because of the color it would have in the fall. I agree. I think really that's the important part <clears throat> of this right now is that in the fall, having color out there, and unfortunately, with the autumn cherry, there's the, you know we cannot control the climate. It's just impossible. We don't do that. None of us are able to do that. And knowing that. The likelihood that that's going to happen is, is is very minimal. Now we may be, you know, if we went forward with this, the first year it may happen. We may never ever see it happen again. But it's not something that, as growers or as maintenance staff, we're going to ever to be be able to control. It's just going to be through luck and mother nature. Do you agree, Mike? Yes. Um, by the way look at the monitor you can see the color much better than it's washed out on the screen so if you're looking at those I have one question uh -huh. um, well the the high pH does that jeopardize the color at all no okay. no it should be fine and I still think that there be can be some some amending done to help the pH some you know but that you know that's that's really unusual pH I'll say that uh, but no that's a good question okay. Michael oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a question regarding the, uh, the spacing of the trees with the existing uh, cherry trees that are there once they remove those you're just going to put the other tree in the hole amend the soil properly or what is the height of the cherry tree that is it's there now how well, high is that well, let me answer your first question. What we're, what our intentions are to do is, is not take the existing tree out and put the new tree in that hole. We're going to cover that hole up. We're going to cover it completely, and we're going to move whatever feed it is away and dig new holes. Okay. We don't want, in case there is any contamination in those holes, we don't want to do that. We're, we're, it, now, is that more work for us to do yeah but going in line with what is the best <coughs> way for these trees to survive yeah. we think that's the best way to move right. yeah so, uh, the uh, Bradford pear as far as Durr's book of woody plants uh, they self-destruct I mean it's just part of their nature of the the makeup of the tree and um, uh, the second question I had was uh, as far as the uh, the and you answered my question I think with the uh, taking out the, the whole root ball of the older tree and uh, if there is some sort of uh, you know disease in that hole then you're going to dig a new hole and then amend the soil in that hole prior to putting yes. the new trees in okay. yes that answered the question yes. yes thank you how many of the existing trees are still alive of the cherry trees we went out. We went out in November and tagged approximately 77 trees that showed some form of life at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean in the spring that there's going to be 77 that are alive then. Uh, so. So, will you be able to take those and we put them somewhere else in the city to use with landscaping, or are they? Our in, our intentions when we get to the point of taking those trees out. Mm -hmm is to move them, the ones that we feel have a good rate of survivability, right. mm -hmm. to try and see if we can plant them in areas that do have better soil conditions right. well, and, and see if they do well. We, we, yeah, we, right. We'd like to use them if possible, definitely. That's when we've talked about that as a staff. Yes. No, I'm sorry. It's, a, <clears throat> it's appreciate the fact that these trees are going to turn the colors they will, especially during the 23rd of October. Because we get a large influx of folks that come and visit the memorials, 
and we want to be able to show off what we've done and what the city's done uh, with everybody's efforts. <coughs> so this grove is, is very important to everybody, especially all our veterans that come visit from out of state. Uh, the fact that the tree is stocky and everything because, you know, we have hurricanes and we don't want that to be, you know, thank God we haven't had any here lately, but again, we have to be prepared for that. So that's why, like Mr. Rosen was saying, it's a shorter, stockier tree that shows some color on the time that we need it for, for the 23rd, that's very important to us. And then the extra benefit would be that, that they, during the spring, they have some more color, that'd be great. So it's, it's a great idea and I appreciate the, the fact that all the studies gone behind all this. Uh, it's well appreciated. I was just going to say, I think that's a beautiful tree, and at the end of the day, that site, those trees, and that ceremony is to honor the men and women who lost their lives that day. And if there's 10 trees and 270 flags out there that represent those people, that's what we'll do. If next year we have 150 <laughs> trees and 150 flags, that's what we do if it's a work in progress. But I think that's a beautiful tree. And I think in, this, in the fall when you're walking around, it, it would be a beautiful place. Any other comments or questions? I just think it's a good idea that this is the, I think it's with the research that uh, Mike has done as far as the uh, the tree, I think it's the best tree for the job and um, I think we should move forward. Lynn? <laughs> well, we were looking for your consensus. I mean, is there's any detractors or anything that we haven't thought of or whatever there, that's where we put the subject matter experts in front of you here to, to speak to that and that's but what that was. One question you said that, uh, that it needs pruning uh, while it's a young tree. Who would be doing the pruning? Well, that that should should already be t really taken care of, you know, if you're getting a two inch, you know, eight to ten tree. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to buy a tree in that size range because okay. if you go any smaller than that, you know, it's you know, when people in a nursery, they you know they know how to train that particular tree from a young age, and and it makes a big difference on that tree. But any maintenance will be Michael and his crew. Right. Well, sorry, that's Ron Massey, deputy city manager. They're extremely <laughs> low maintenance <laughs> trees, <laughs> but once they're established, you know maybe some work. You know if it, you have an extreme drought before they've had a chance to grow out of the root ball into the, the soil. <coughs> the, you said you had. 73 trees or whatever. 77 that we have tagged just yet. Uh, on the new trees, how many and how soon? On the Chinese pistachio? Yeah, if we Well, uh, we've identified, I, I think Mr. Worthington, is, as, as we've worked with him, he's identified, I think, about 250 currently. Wonderful. Um, now, again, We've got to get some agreements taken care of. You know, as we sit here today, as a city, we don't maintain the site, and you know those things still need to be worked sure. through the proper channels. And, and as I said, we're, we're doing that. Anthony Prince is working every day on that. I know that, and I feel certain that within the next couple of weeks, month, that those things will happen. That will then put us in process. You know, we've obviously been doing research, but that will then put us in a, a process where we will start moving. Let me also address that at a point when you as joint committees are comfortable with whichever tree, this tree or some other tree, even if we have not concluded the agreement with the DOT, Department of Transportation, the city will take the necessary action to put it, the necessary actions to put a deposit on those trees that are available. Okay. So for example, if you said to us today, okay, we appreciate all the information, would like some more information, would like to do a field trip, that's what we're going to do. If on the other hand, you said, we like where you're headed, we think that this is a good thing, we'd like to go ahead with this, then literally this coming week, we will put a deposit down on those trees so they're not, if you pardon the expression, sold out from under us. On the other hand, we want to stress this, time is not the issue. Doing it right is the issue. So if you would like to set up a field trip, Mike has said he would welcome you all to Greenville. He did not say he would buy you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but he did say he would be happy to show you a tour. So, we're, go ahead. I'm just not buying it from a nursery. Will we get um, a warranty, say, 
if some of the trees die and they will be replaced? Well, what we do know is this. I'm sure we'll look at that. But what we do know is this. Make no mistake, when you plant 273 trees, some are going to die. That's why initially we want to buy an additional 10%. You're just going to have that happen. Now, if we had uh, some things go wrong, then I'm sure we would bring some people in uh, from NC State potentially or from other places or experts as to why they went wrong. Uh, I prefer not to even think that way. Uh, and we think we're going to be pretty successful at the Grove with uh, with this tree. I think this is a good tree. It's a great tree for the site. I think we have a good staff to move forward in implementing and installing these trees and helping them reach their maturity. That in turn will give a good representation to those who lost their lives on October 23rd. Mike, what type of a warranty, if these trees were purchased from uh, the nurseries that y'all have been talking to, what type of warranty do they give? Generally in the wholesale tree business, people will only warranty plants for things that happen in the nursery because they have no control you know, of the tree after it leaves the nursery. And um, generally they're sold at a price that keeps that in mind, you know, and if you're a retailer, you price the trees up to, you know, to build that in. So that's generally the way, it, the way it's, it's done. So if it's, if it's an insect or disease problem or something that was deemed to be, you know, the fault of the nursery, you know, you, a good nursery will stand behind a product in that way. The other thing that we have talked, uh, Jason, would you stand up a minute? Uh, Jason is our horticulturist. He is not nearly as attractive as Kate, who most of y'all know as our horticulturist, but he does bring a lot of talent. Uh, what Jason uh, will do is as we are looking at whatever tree you decide, they will visit the nursery, they will look at every tree, and they will accept those trees. Once again, not looking negatively at the cherry. If that type of investigation had been done prior to those trees being planted, we do not believe that many of them would have been acceptable. But we understand we have to get it right this next time, and we are the ones who are doing it this time, so we will take the necessary expense and effort to have him look at the trees in person. Well, we welcome Grace Hubbard, the chairman oh, of the Environmental Appearance Advisory Committee. Your vice chair took over and gaveled us to order at the time. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Rosen, the two boards, as um, Dr. Woodruff said, um, you folks can ask for additional information or you could make a motion to um, endorse this selection should you desire to do that. Or you could take no action whatsoever on the matter. You know, all those options are available to you to, to take at this time. Well, I'd personally like to see us go ahead and take some action and get the ball rolling. And of course, it'll be a separate thing. If you do that, that'll be just the Beirut board and yeah. the ENA board can do something the same or separate at the time. So if well, you want to for, for the conversation. I would like to make a motion for the Beirut session to Mr. Rosen that we go forward with this tree. I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Beirut Memorial. Okay. <laughs> Grace, if you want to ask what your board would like to do. Motion. Yes. I'll make a motion to, to accept, to accept. Yes, sir. Now let's call, yes. call for the vote. Call for the vote. <laughs> call those in favor? No. And all those nay? <laughs> in no nays. Okay. okay. All right. Well, two unanimous votes there, so I think we have that. It doesn't usurp um, any investigation you might wish to do or to keep informed about it. We want to keep you informed. I think you saw the spirit of that, that this all has developed rather quickly as it is, and here you are now. So One thing, I, I appreciate the fact that you keep us informed a little bit because we'll start getting some inquiries from the family members and veterans, and it's nice to be able to say with certainty that things are starting to roll and we picked the tree and it's going to be done pretty soon, uh, it makes them feel better. Right. So we'd appreciate that. It might be a good informational point to have that picture somewhere in the lobby of City Hall. We can make that happen. Yes. 
Yeah. While we're together, let me mention uh, one other thing. Uh, you know, if we are finished with that topic, well, there were two other people who had their hands up. I, I, I just had a question. Something. Where did you get your uh, soil samples tested? At NC State? Or? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, what? No, I just I, because they're the duty experts yes. here in North Carolina. So that's where we get the state service here locally. Right. Right. With the bad soil in that tree. What's the guarantee that that will work? Well, I think you heard that if you buy it from a, a wholesaler, they will not guarantee it because they can't control what happens after it goes out from their deal. But that's why we're buying those additional trees. So if something happens, yeah, we'll have those. Yeah, I'm talking about this bad soil. He said the soil. I to think we said the soil will do it. Uh, Mr. Arden, I think what, what we heard tonight is that 6.5 pH is desirable for the autumn cherry. While 8.8 .8 or 8.2 isn't desirable for the Chinese pistache, it can survive in those. Do we have to do some soil amendments? And we're going to do those here regardless because we have some, some things we need to do to the grass out there. We're going to do those things. So the, the pH level fits the tree much better. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. Forgive me. Yeah. The, I think that is the question the you were asking. Not 100 percent. Yeah. Well, I no, think it's interesting that he shows these things growing in traffic islands and in Texas and in, you know, it certainly seems to have a wide range of tolerance there. That, that one text that was in the um, front there, um, wasn't it in this one or something there? It's a, a truly tenacious species. Wow. <laughs> and uh, yes. one of the, the professors at NC State who investigated, her recommendation was the same plant as mine was. It was independent of, of hers. Let me also, just for the record, clarify several things. Mike said that he is most likely not going to be a bidder on this. I want it clearly understood, though, that if he chooses to be a bidder, then the city will certainly look favorably towards that. However, I do not want anyone to think that the reason why he is here and why he is representing this particular tree is because he believes that he is going to be the successful vendor or bidder. If he chooses, if he finds a way to get the trees that we want in the, in the quantity we want and in the containers that we want, we will certainly welcome a bid from him. So just want to clarify where the city stands on, on this. Well, I can, I can say that I would want trees right now, after the recession, nurseries were in dire straits, and nurseries, uh, a lot of nurseries didn't plant a lot of trees, and trees take three to six years to mature. So right now, trees are selling really well, and most nurseries who have good quality plants can sell you know, all that they want. So I'm here. I wouldn't want to be on this TV broadcast <laughs> in front of you if I didn't think this would be successful because um, I just I realize how how a profile project this is and how, Im how important it is to so many people. And uh, as a lover of trees, you know, I really want the trees to be said, you know, we spent money on trees and these trees were successful and that's good for our industry and it's good for this community. Thank you. Thank you for I think we have a good person here and we certainly appreciate you being a part of this and, and doing that. Um, we were wrapping up at that moment there and um, if there's any other business to come before us or anything else that y'all want to do, then um, you can adjourn the ENA and then the chairman of the Beirut board can adjourn. Motion to recess. Or you can just declare it. Oh, I declare. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting's a drug. Yes. You got you to follow his technique of the pen tap. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank, Thank you. We really do appreciate it. If you need a hug, we appreciate it. Yes, I would like to do. Okay. Well, I'm saying these things.